Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Karshina with Verse Films Productions and you made it back to another edition of Kill Count right here on the channel. Stick around and let's count down. Something in the mist! Something in the mist! Fear of spiders? Beware. Get your warrior spray ready and count with me. Stephen King's The Mist is sure to get you fired up. Get your praise hands up. Let's go. Don't go out there. There's something in the mess. It took John Lee. Screw that. I'm getting to my car. Mr. No! The Mist is a 2007 horror mystery thriller based off of Stephen King's novella of the same name. Director Frank Darabont is no stranger to directing great movies like The Shawshank Redemption, The Green Mile, The Woman in the Room, which is another of Stephen King's novellas, and TV series like The Walking Dead, Reigns, and Mob City. Brought to you by Dimension Films. Some kind of chemical explosion. Has to be. A runtime of 127 minutes. What the? F ah, get it off! Get it off! Get this freaking thing off me! Get it off! Ah, help me! Help me! Ah! <laughs> ah! Ah! I do know that it's definitely not supernatural or biblical. And no offense, Mrs. Carmody, but the only way we're going to help ourselves is to seek rescue can be currently viewed on netflix as of this kill count episode and it is rated r and to those who are always confused the mist is not john carpenter's the fog even though monsters come out in the same fashion stars thomas jane marcia gay harden laura holden andre brower toby jones william sattler jeffrey dumunn alexa de avalos francis sterhagen nathan gamble sam whitwer chris owen melissa mcbride brian libby and the list goes on thomas jane of course by punisher fame the expanse the last time I committed suicide with Keanu Reeves and Deep Blue Sea. And yes, we have some crossover with The Walking Dead main cast seen in this movie. Sam Witwer went on to play lead as a vampire, the American version of being human, and currently is the main voice in the horror video game, The Callisto Protocol. I'll link that game here. The 23rd person was a great character because he acted opposite to what his leather pants wearing biker look made him out to be. He even told Mrs. Carmody that he believes in God too, but he didn't think he was an evil God that she made him out to be. He was roped by the ways to determine how far he can go in the mist, but that didn't work out. He also had the best, this is a knife, show off scenes with Toby Jones. Kills 24 through 26 are just careless kills. Sally getting bit by the poisonous creatures. Where are the damn extinguishers? The man making a makeshift fort got torn by the pterodactyl creature. Then we see a man just get burned alive by tripping over a bucket of gasoline with a torch in his hand. I mean, it really is bananas. Insert joke here. I did the most accurate kill count frame by frame using the theory and assumption that if you were caught in the mist, you didn't survive. With the exception of the mother in the beginning who navigated her way home to find her children because the twist in the end is we see her getting rescued by the army soldiers as we see the tank of people drive by. Most of the kills are self-explanatory and can be seen. Off-screen kills such as the opener mentioning John Lee doesn't count because we never see his body, but we do know that he's confirmed dead. The other two soldiers die by hanging at the loading dock, the third soldier being knifed by the butcher and then thrown outside for the mist to devour him. You can't go out. I won't allow it. Won't allow it? It's against God's will. Haven't I shown that I am his vessel? Mrs. Carmody, the religious zealot, finally got her come up against by Ollie, the grocery worker, who finally spoke up and used his marksman state championship skills. The rest of the kills are self-explanatory. 
Ah! William Sattler, of course, plays the memorable character Death in Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey, also starring Keanu Reeves and Alex Winter. Getting beaten on Battleship is always a fun scene. The synopsis goes like this. David Drayton and his young son Billy are among a large group of terrified townspeople trapped in a local grocery store by strange, otherworldly mist. David is the first to realize that there are things lurking in the mist, deadly, horrifying things, creatures not of this world. Survival depends on everybody in the store pulling together, but is that possible given human nature? As all good horror should be, fear and panic sets in deep. David begins to wonder what terrifies him more, the monsters in the mist or the ones inside the store, the human kind, the people that until now have been his friends and neighbors. This explores the ultimate enemy, ourselves. The behemoth that walks past as they make their getaway shows just how horrific things in the mist can be. It even looked down at them to acknowledge their presence, but moves along at its own pace. Some of the CGI at the beginning is weak, and there are a few lines that can escape the genre, but other than that, this is a home run. The performances, especially from Toby Jones and Marsha Gay Harden, the ingenious handheld camera, which is never used as a gimmick, the lack of an underscore and sound design, this lends the great atmosphere and tension Darabont builds. The kills are brutal both by the monsters and by the townspeople. We watch alliances form, religious paranoia takes hold, and the movie takes the time to establish characters whom we come to care for before the true action begins. I dock it a couple of points because the middle lags a bit and because there are some silly scenes that warrant a head scratch. But other than that, it was a story that could be watched at any time. The ending is one of the most heartbreaking and depressing endings to a horror movie that I have ever seen. The twist is just brutal. It literally is Murphy's Law at work. The Mist originally appeared in the 1980 horror anthology Dark Forces and was later re-edited and included in the Stephen King short story collection Skeleton Crew. Before making the leap to the silver screen, The Mist was also released as a fully dramatized audio version and served as an inspiration for the successful video game franchises Half-Life and Silent Hill, one of my favorites. Of course, the trapped in a building formula is nothing new, but the idea of not knowing what has them trapped is utterly fascinating. The Mist is atmospheric, well acted, and the use of Host of Seraphim by Dead Can Dance during the depressing climax is wonderful. I do feel like the song choice could have been shorter as it did get annoying, but I feel like it does touch upon the feeling of what just happened to David, his family, and the town. What monsters do you have lurking inside? Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time on the next Kill Count right here on the channel.